Welcome to Dub Nation, the official show of the Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby. I am Jerem Jordan alongside Banksy. What did you do during the bye week? I took the family and uh, we kind of stole away to Park City for a little staycation. We did some skiing and snowboarding, ate a ton of barbecue and sat in a hot tub. It was a great off week. I would have taken half of that. Uh, I'm not <laughs> that. That sounds like an amazing time. That was great. Yeah, I did not hit it as hard as you did, but uh, no, all good. A bye week was good for this team to perhaps just just ease the mind. Now at 0-3, go for the first win. Home opener against Dallas. We've got a loaded program. We'll get to that in a moment. This this might be the most loaded show we've ever had. Crazy. We got we got an NFL guy. We got a future NFL guy. We got Tomasi Tonga. It's awesome. Okay. We're live on the uh, – let's just go there. This is what's on the show. BYU quarterback Jaron Hall, one of four dudes who signed a new name, image, likeness, or NIL deal – well, join the program. Let's go. We had such a great year for BYU last year. We'll recap week four, preview week five. Which actor would you play? Would play you in a movie? The guys answered that on the team. Pretty funny. Uh, not, uh, who is it? Caleb McEnany looks unbelievably like uh, Heath Ledger. It's unbelievable. Facts. Uh, seriously. We'll preview the Dallas game. Both teams winless. Trying to get that first one. Home opener. Niall Saunders mic'd up. And uh, Tomas Tonga. Hometown here from Harriman. And his Harriman homie, former Ute uh, and now Arizona Cardinal NFL player, Lecky Fotu, will join the program. This is this is going to be one of the best shows we've ever had, man. Absolutely stacked full of talent. And, uh, you know, the great thing is it's top shelf rugby from front to back. So I'm excited to get stuck in. Home opener this week. Let's go, baby. Let's go, man. We're live on the Utah Warriors Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube account. Subscribe to the podcast version on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SoundCloud, sending questions and comments if you have them. Okay, uh, earlier uh, this week, the Utah Warriors announced a partnership with Britton Covey of Utah, who just finished his 17th season there, which was crazy. <laughs> you could play that long in college. I'm kidding. Love Britton. He's great. He's training for the NFL. And then current players from BYU, Kingsley Suamata'i, uh, future NFL offensive line draft pick, Chaz Ayu, who's a safety, and then quarterback Jaron Hall in a first-of-its-kind Name, image, and likeness deal to promote the team, design some swag, attend games. Jaron Hall is going to be at the game this Saturday. It's going to be awesome. Here's uh, my conversation with Jaron Hall about this new deal with the Warriors. All right, Jaron, uh, long time no talk. You and I did an interview Monday. Here we are on Wednesday. Always good to talk to you multiple times. Uh, welcome to Dub Nation, man. Yeah, it's good to be here. Always a pleasure to talk to you once a week. However many times a week, love it. Let's yeah, let's let's talk more. We I've joked we're gonna start a podcast called Jaron and Jerem. At some point, we're gonna. Why not? Podcasts are blowing up. It'll be about Mapleton sports. <laughs> yeah, I'm a fan. I'm an advocate. Since we share that uh, connection, you know, around Spanish sports, Mapleton. So you signed this NIL deal, name, image, likeness. This is a new thing with college athletes with the Utah Warriors. Uh, selfishly, this is a blend of my two worlds, which is super awesome. Um, that includes uh, you, Kingsley Suamatia, one of the, the tackles, who's a five-star transfer from Oregon at BYU, uh, and Chaz Ayu, and then Britton Covey, uh, a lot of Cougars' favorite youth, uh, you know, from Provo. They like Britton. He's a good dude. Yeah. What, when did this kind of first come about, and why did you feel like, hey, this is the thing I want to do? I want, I want to connect with the Warriors. So it, it happened a couple of talks. They reached out to, you know, different agencies, and in my agency specifically with the opportunity. Um, I never imagined a deal like this would come out of NIL. Um, so when it came up at first, I was kind of, you know, feeling it out to see what happened in it. I just thought about it a little bit, just the opportunity to connect with the local professional you know, rugby team. I've never been into rugby. Um, my best friend played it growing up, so I watched him a lot. I know it's, very, it's you know, somewhat similar. Um, and I just love sports. And so just the opportunity to, to help promote their, their brand. And, and I know the rugby league is growing throughout the country and it's huge around the world. Um, I just thought it'd be a unique opportunity to kind of get ingrained in that sport and that world of rugby. Um, and just, you know, what opportunities came out of it. I think you'll love the connection with the Warriors, honestly. And that's not just because I work for the team uh, and know you from BYU. It's, it's so embedded in what Utah is. Like, rugby is a part of this community. BYU has a rich tradition. Utah has a rich tradition. Highland, of course. Now, the Utah Warriors is sort of Hopefully the, the encapsulation of all of that history that has a lot to do with Polynesians, but also this community as it grows. I think it's going to be awesome. So what, what convinced you uh, that this would be something that you would want your brand attached to? 
because yeah. this is new the last couple of years with college athletes and you can you can be picky but you chose to do this well for one the, the sport of rugby i think what really uh, attracts me to is kind of the sportsmanship the character you know as soon as the game's over shaking hands looking at the eye um and in the way it produces people off the field i mean i've watched forever strong who knows how many times that movie just kind of i mean I, I don't know if that's hollywood eyes right they make it more than it is, but just the aspect of being a good, being a man of character or a woman of character, that's initially what drew me to the sport. And then as we sat down with, you know, the, the owner of the team, the coaches, um, and some of the other staff, you know, uh, last week to, to kind of finalize the deal, and they talked specifically about the Warriors organization, what they stand for, what they believe in family, community, making a difference, and then also bringing the love of rugby to, to the state of Utah because it's, it's booming here. It really is. And so just all the ties and the – the feeder programs they have to uh, make a potentially great organization throughout the years. That's really what drew, drew me to it initially was how that's exactly, I feel like my brand as a family man, as a father, a husband, um, you know, I'm from this community of, of Utah, born and raised here. So I've, I've been in it my whole life. And so it's just an opportunity to, to get more in the grain into the upside of, of my community that I haven't really stepped foot into yet. And it's going to be fun. Uh, the rugby part, You'll get the hang of it after a, a couple games. So you mentioned your friend played rugby growing up. So you've at least watched a little bit, I think. Yeah, yeah, I've watched yeah quite a few games in high school just of his. Um, and so, but that's really the extent of it. You know, I feel like when I'm on TV growing up, there wasn't really rugby games on to watch. It was football, basketball, baseball, whatever. So uh, this will be a good opportunity to kind of have it in my forefront, thinking out for it more and, and searching up on it um, to find opportunities to not only go to the games and be there in person, but maybe start watching on TV and and finding, you know, a love and appreciation for it. <clears throat> Part the quarterback, Jaron Hall from BYU. I think that you would play the position of fly half. That's where I'd probably put you. Uh, a distributor, a guy who can be offensive, doesn't, mm-hmm. doesn't have to tackle a ton. That's okay as a quarterback, right? Yeah. And then uh, some speed and good kicking ability. So how's your kicking ability? Well, let's say I broke my right leg as a kid. I had to learn to kick my left, and I have not mastered it yet. So uh, that that be a little <laughs> But anything else, I think I might be able to manage. Give me a couple couple months of practice. Do you know the BYU quarterback who also punted? Oh. Historically. He's one of the no. greats. You have to tell me. Jim McMahon. No, he didn't. Did he really? Yes. Yes. Jim McMahon what? was the punter for like a full season and a half. I kid you not. So he stayed out all four. If the fourth down rolls around, he's staying on the field. He just stays know. on the field, yeah. Or or he could just throw a, a, a pass if he wanted, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the other aspect of that, actually. How's a little trickery going on? Interesting. Yeah. I didn't know that. I've never yeah. heard that about him. Yeah. Jimmy See, McMahon would have been a rugby player. Would he a good kicker? Yeah. Like a, no, Ryan, like a Ryan Rico? Not like a Ryan Rico. Ryan Rico's legit, man. <laughs> Ryan Rico would be – Ryan, Ryan Rico would play one of the forward positions as a 6'5", like 230 dude. Like a, our punters, since I've been here, all look like rugby players. Rico, Danny Jones before that. Yep, uh, literally an Australian rules football player, man. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Danny. Yeah, it was great. Okay, so, uh, you know, I, I've noticed you wore the minimal amount of red. I think that's probably a good move for you, right? Yeah, I'm allergic <laughs> to red, to be honest. <laughs> It's not good. It doesn't make the complexion of my skin look very great. You know, it doesn't show off what, you know, my dad gave me, you know. So it's uh, it's just not my cup of tea, you know. Listen, I get it. There's a lot of black options here. Yeah. As you can see, I'm, I'm wearing the four, you know, stripes that represent the values of the Warriors. So, no, I get it. Britton Covey can wear the red ones. The BYU guys can wear the black. See, we can bring this together. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be all right. Uh, did you did you meet or have you been made aware of all the BYU connections and there are Utah connections as well? But the BYU connections on the team with the CEO Kimball Care and assistant yeah. coach Sean Davies, yeah. and of course I'm involved. But Paula CK coming back, Calvin Whiting, one of the current players, is also from BYU. There's a strong Cougar connection there. I think you guys fit in. Yeah, I was blown away when we met with with uh, all of them last week, and they were running us through all the Utah connections, all the BYU connections. And, and again, just the community aspect, BYU, Utah, right in the backyard, football players turn rugby players or rugby to football, back to rugby, however that goes. It's, it's pretty cool just uh, how familiar it all is. So with this uh, deal with the Warriors, what can we expect in terms of how you will be involved with the team? Yeah. yeah, so a big thing, you know, obviously they're trying to grow their brand in the Utah community especially, and then, you know, also throughout the – um, the entire country, and which I think is good for them because of the Utah and BYU ties throughout the country. 
you'll see us, uh, each of us driving, you know, hopefully driving the ticket sales for the people here, getting into the games, letting them feel what the atmosphere of how fun it is, how energetic it is. And I'm looking forward to that myself Saturday. Um, so we'll be on social media a lot, posting, you know, the, the uh, links to, to buying tickets, to buying the merchandise from the stores, to get the gear up and up and running throughout the community with the hopes of, you know, the team being able to expand and, you know, uh, if it goes perfectly the years to come for facilities to expand to make it a really big deal um, and continue to, to gain numbers of teams throughout the league um, to eventually turn into something like what the NFL looks like. You know, you got 20, 30 teams all around the country. You know, you have a big fan base following, supporting. And I think, you know, you always hear about the dead period of sports. Well, as soon as football is over, now it's like, oh, we got to wait or, or basketball, baseball. Now it's like rugby fits right in there in the springtime, too. So that's another thing that someone can look forward to if you're an avid sports fan like myself. And so for me, it's something I feel like I've missed my whole life is these couple months of, of something that invests my time and energy to. And, and why not Warriors rugby if you're from Utah and, and all over the country for that matter. So that's mainly how we'll be trying to help out with, with this NIL opportunity just to get fans engaged and, and bring new fans to the sport in general. And do you know which sport doesn't have a players union and, uh, you know, owners issue right now? Major League Rugby. Really? I wish we were playing baseball, right? I want my Mariners to uh, make the playoffs here, but hey, let's go. Yeah, absolutely. Build the space, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so did I read correctly that you get to perhaps design some swag and profit off that as well? You're going to design yeah, some, that's some swag? Right? That's so I'm, I'm, I'm going to take, take my time. You know, I'm going I'm to fill it out, see you know what goes, what, buy, what sells, what doesn't. Maybe uh, get some, uh, you know, some comments from the public, what they want. Hopefully nothing red. Hopefully, you know, some black and gray. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, that's part of it, though. If we want to make our own, you know, uh, a line of swag for people to purchase, we can do that as well. So we'll see what happens with that, um, you know, and, and we'll go from there. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, what you're going to pick, you know, is it hats, hoodies, shirts, shorts, socks? Everything. You know, Anything possible, yeah. Anything. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Uh, okay, let's talk about, uh, you know, spring football. You just started this week. Uh, you know, Monday I was out at practice. We get to watch the last 15 minutes. I saw you sling it to Puka Nakua on the sideline, Gunnar Romney deep. Uh, it looked like you picked right where you left off. How did it feel for you? Yeah, it was fun. I think uh, the nice thing about that, you say picked up right where we left off, is, is with the BYU schedule, our spring ball usually starts a little quicker than others. So it's a, it's a smaller gap from, you know, bowl game to spring ball. Um, versus, you know, spring ball all the way to fall is a big, huge gap there. So I think spring ball, usually, if you have your guys returning like we did, you'll see that that spring, first spring prep is smoother than others um, because there hasn't been as much time off. So it's fun just to be back with the guys. It definitely felt like we were right back in rhythm where we were, you know, a couple months ago. Um, so that's a, it's a big confidence boost for the team, really, to see how you can get right back in, start functioning well. Um, just to know we're starting so much further ahead than we did last year. Um, it just makes makes us excited for what's you know possible to come in our future this season, coming off a good season, um, you know, considering how far behind we were last spring. So it'll be fun. It's been good. First two practices were good. I'm excited, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I had this thought last year, and then it struck me again while we've been talking is, you were in a quarterback battle last year post Zach Wilson. It was expected that you'd probably be the guy, but you couldn't capitalize on NIL at that point because you weren't the starter. Now right. that you're the starter, the opportunities are, are better for you. So this has been, I guess, a, a, a cool period for you to like, okay, I'm the starter. Whoever's interested with NIL, they can reach out to you, right? That, that helps. Yeah, it does. I mean, bottom line with NIL, like you said, I mean, unless unless you're you're playing and, and you do well, opportunities won't be there, right? So I think it's important for, for student athletes coming into this NIL space to realize that Bottom line, you got to go play whatever sport it is you're playing. That should be your main focus. If you're so focused on NIL and getting this and that, chances are it's not going to work out because you're not spending the time you need to on your craft. So for me, that was the case all last year. That will be the case this year, honestly, because that's really what brings in the money if, if that's what you're about. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's been a patient game for me. And, you know, but hopefully this, this, this year we can pick up a little bit. And I've already had a couple of great, great opportunities to kind of help out. So I'm just very grateful for the opportunities we're getting these days. And and you're you're tight with Britton Covey, I take it. Friends, friendly. You and Cougars can get along here. Yeah, that's my man right there. Absolutely. <laughs> Britton's a great dude. Good well, Jared, we appreciate the time, man. And uh we're stoked. You're gonna be at Saturday's game, I take it. Right? Yep, twelve o'clock. I will be there. I think I'm taking the ball out. So yeah, I'll be nice. inside and get my and everything on. So Okay. I'm so go to the Warriors fan. game Saturday. Say hi to Jaron, take a picture, get an autograph. Should oh, be a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. That'll be fun. Okay. Jared, we appreciate the time, man. Sweet. Thanks, Darren.
That's Jaron Hall, BYU quarterback, part of that uh, four-player NIL deal. Pretty cool to see these guys connect with the Warriors. And I think all of their brands align with the, the values of the Warriors as well, which is super cool. I think it's fantastic to see these deals cross the different codes. You know, there's so many parallels with the athletic abilities of these guys at the professional and college level to have them be able to come into our space and to be able to show off rugby in their space to fans that don't even know that it's a sport that it exists in America. Going to be super exciting. And, you know, what a great face to have as a partner with Jaron Hall there. Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. So Utes and Cougars connecting to come together for this, which I think is pretty awesome. We're going to talk to Lecky Fotu later as well, former Ute. So it's not all Cougs. It's not all Utes. It's both, baby. We're coming together. And you can see Jaron this Saturday at the game, as you just talked about. Here we go, Utah Warriors. This is the moment we've been waiting for. It's home opener time versus the Dallas Jackals. And uh, you can get your tickets starting at just 13. $15. Uh, Jaron Hall, of course, will be there, and we need all of Dub Nation to show up and be loud in the red and black Rocky Four Stripes and be ready to go. Get your tickets at warriorsrugby.com. And BYU's playing Utah after. How perfect is this? That's at uh, three. So you can uh, you, you know get one ticket that'll be good for both games, which will be awesome. So shout out to the old roomie, Steve St. Pierre, the head coach of the Cooks. Let's go. Hey, uh, let's recap week four in MLR. Bye week for the Warriors, but let's talk about what happened. Giltini survived against New England. That's a closer margin than I anticipated. You know, I think it's a closer margin than a lot of people anticipated, but uh, Giltini's coming off the bye week and uh, really just kind of gearing up with some of the new pieces they've got there. You know, they looked good, but not great in that in that game. Toronto pounds DC. Austin beats Seattle. Austin's clearly the number one team in the West right now. San Diego right there with them. We'll get to the standings in a second. Look at New York just, whoa, 41-5 against Dallas. San Diego and Ma'anonu, 31-20. Nonu got a yellow, I think, in that game. Um, and the Giltinis we mentioned. So any any shockers from week four, in uh, your opinion? No real surprises. I think the only uh, real thing to be disappointed about in this week was how terribly I picked in our uh, <laughs> battle of the minds. I picked, I just picked the home team's blank sheet and I probably, in hindsight, <laughs> that was a bad idea. <laughs> Milk was a bad choice. <laughs> um, you, you went one for four, I went five, <laughs> five and oh. Uh, so on the season so far, I'm 16 and four. I'm crushing it right now. It's impressive. Early. You're eight and 12, so it's not over. It's We're like a fourth of the way through this thing. Let's just calm down, okay, everybody? All right, let's look at the standings uh, in the West. Austin out in front of everybody, 19 to 16, San Diego there. Seattle, remember, three teams go to the playoffs this year. Houston at 10, LA at nine, although they played one game fewer, right? Utah as well, one game fewer, but look at what Utah did, by the way. Had to play Austin, San Diego, and Seattle all on the road. Obviously, these are three of the best teams in the league. Maybe three of the top five, it feels like, right? So that was a tough haul. Obviously, Utah giving some points away. Otherwise, it's different. But, man, they, there's a hole to climb out of right now that's, uh, you know, it's concerning. But the good news is Utah's coming back home. They can right the ship this week against Dallas. And they have to. I mean, 0-3 is a big hole to be in. But it shouldn't be a surprise for Utah Warriors fans because this is the task for every Utah Warriors team early in the season. We're going to start every Mm -hmm. season on the road. So it's always going to be this uphill battle. And I think patience has got to be the word here because we know the Warriors are going to get it together. They've looked fantastic at times and it's really just tightening down all the little details and putting together a little consistency. We're talking about adding up points and hopefully bonus points real quick for this Warriors rugby franchise. Get it together in the next couple of weeks. You play, I think three of the next four at home and then Paula CK joins the mix and then that could be a game changer as well which is exciting okay eastern conference standings new york out in front at 14 points rugby atl at 11 new england with 10 new england showing up right now a little bit uh surprised toronto's not in the mix as much nola gold only two oh and three with two points similar situation to utah and then dc in the east uh with no points uh you know oh, oh and four pretty impressive um you know that that new york is Doing their thing. They beat ATL. That's the one loss for ATL. So uh, the East, that's the East. I mean, we kind of knew that, you know, rugby ATL and uh, rugby Hoboken, New Jersey, were going to be in there. <laughs> uh, they, they were the class of the East last year, and they're showing why this year. I think the surprise there is Toronto at two and two. 
But again, they started the season on the road as well. So tough. The Free Jacks playing some good rugby and some entertaining rugby as well. I think that's really a surprise coming out of the East this year. Absolutely. Okay, we mentioned it. Which actor would play you in a movie? It's a great question. I'm excited to hear what Banksy has to say about himself. But the boys answered that in today's Q&A. Hey, uh, Major, I guess. Jason Momoa, Aquaman, baby. <laughs> Connie McBride. Mark Wahlberg in Invincible. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds is <laughs> playing there. Chris Hemsworth. Mel Gibson, Patriot. Adam Sandler. Easy. Jeff Bridges. Give me a I think I'd be maybe like a Tom Hardy. My wife's the one of the Timothy Chalmay. I'm going uh, Kevin Hart. He's too small for Kevin Hart. No, no. The Caleb McEnany, Heath Ledger one's incredible. Puna Vili for Kimbo Slice was spot on too. That That's pretty really good. Fun. Yeah, and then there were a few that are were just you know insane. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty funny, man. So who plays you in a movie, Jerem Jordan? Okay, the answer I don't like is Michael Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the one I'm okay with is Zach Braff of Scrubs. Look, count that. I like that's good casting. Yeah. I could yeah, see I, that. Yeah. I would, there's, see, there's, there's two that stand out for me. There's a realistic one and an optimistic one. Realistically, I think Seth Rogen. Yeah. I like so that I could see Seth Rogen. Optimistically, uh, I think Parks and Rec, Chris Pratt. Parks and Rec, Chris Pratt. Not yes, a, I, not a, right. not Avengers, Chris Pratt, or you know Guardians of the Galaxy, Chris Pratt. Yes. He's in way too good a shape for that. But Parks and Rec, Chris Pratt, get that's, at you, boy. That's funny. Uh, so you play in a band, band called Mouse Rat? Is that what I'm... <laughs> yeah. I love Parks and Rec. It's so good. That was great stuff. Shout out to uh, the video team with the Warriors who do such a good job. Make sure you follow them on social media, the Utah Warriors. Content throughout the week to get to know these guys, uh, not to mention Dub Nation, of course. Okay, let's preview the game. The battle of winless teams who need a win to stay in the playoff hunt. Dallas and Utah. It's the home opener. It's Saturday at noon. Earlier kickoff, come to the game if you can't be there in person. Um, you know, watch it on TV if you can't be there in person. KMYU streaming on kslsports.com and the Rugby Network. Radio call ESPN 700 and 960. Banksy and Ashley Burge on this. This is, as we mentioned, is a massive game. Utah's got to defend the home turf and probably get a bonus point while doing it. You know, if there was ever a time to write the ship, this is it, right? Like, if you've got to come off a bye week starting 0-3, facing the expansion team who's also winless is probably a good way to go. You get them at home. This is your chance to hit the reset button after facing three of the toughest teams in the league, not just in the West, but in the league. So here we go, Dub Nation. This is where we get her done. Huge game. Okay, a couple notes on Dallas. 74 points, second fewest among all teams who have played four games. 159 is most allowed. There's an opportunity there for some points. And uh, they have allowed 37 to 43 points in each game. So perhaps this is a breakout opportunity for the Warriors offense, which we know is going to explode at some point. There's too much talent there not to have scored, what, six points in the first half in three games? I expect Utah to be way better in this one. Well, they're going to have to be way better in the first half to come away with a win in every game, not just this one. Um, Obviously, that's been established with the way the competition level has increased in year five of Major League Rugby. But I think getting back, not just in front of the home fans, but on a proper rugby pitch where most of these teams are playing on converted football grounds that don't have the width that a traditional rugby ground does, they're sometimes 10, almost 15 meters shorter in width than a lot of rugby grounds are. Uh, thankfully, at Zions Bank Stadium, we have a full-length, full-width field that allows for the expansive type of rugby that the Utah Warriors like to play. And hopefully, that plays into our advantage this week versus Dallas. That's a great point. The width is going to give Mika Cruse and Mikey Teo and these guys uh, the space they need. And Joe Mono and James White Folly and all these guys. Um, we should mention, uh, you know, this is the first ever meeting with Dallas, by the way. New uh, expansion team to the league, the 13th team in Major League Rugby this year. They were supposed to join last year. Didn't end up happening. Here they are. Um, both teams seeking their first win of 2022. Oh, by the way, Alex Tucci, former Warrior, 
he plays for Dallas. It'll be good to uh, good to see him. And, of course, Utah will play at Dallas on June 4th. That'll be the regular season finale. You know, some great matchups, always the great stories. Tucci was a fan favorite and a favorite of the boys in the locker room. He's really well-liked and really, really well-respected here, you know, for his work ethic, his attitude, and the, the kind of person that he was. So it'll be great to have him back, even if it's on the opposition bench, and just kind of, you know, acknowledge what he did through the first couple of years of Utah Warriors rugby here, and then we can stomp a mud hole in his long-haired backside and get the win. <laughs> Love you, Tucci. Uh, you know what? Seth Rogen would have said the same exact thing. I feel like. <laughs> okay, the first player in Major League Rugby, the history of the league to 50 caps is our own Angus McClellan of the Utah Warriors. Here's what his teammates had to say about him in today's player spotlight. We'll get to that in a moment. We'll get Maybe. to that in a moment or later. Uh, basically, the guys love him. He's one of the most soft-spoken players on the team. Uh, you know, he's extremely relatable to a couple of the guys. And being, uh, being soft-spoken just... is optimistic, Jerem. He is he is the <laughs> I mean, if you picked the recipe for the perfect prop, it's Gus McClellan. He's got the body type, he's salty, nothing ever impresses him. He does all the hard work. He's not afraid to get stuck in. He just He's everything you want in that anchor for your scrum on the tight head side. And he's done it at an elite level, almost without recognition, really, until now when he's the first MLR player to reach 50 caps. So props to Angus McClellan. You know, I've sang his praises for the last couple of years. And uh, you talk about a guy that really deserves to be playing at the next level and internationally for his country. It's Gus, man. Amen to that. Angus is probably the most relatable one on the team for me both have kids kind of both work during the season um so we have those same complaints as as parents do and as you know co-workers do but no he's a great guy he's uh in my opinion the most deceptive athlete on the field um like every time he touches the ball something happens he doesn't look like it He's gonna hate me for saying that, but it doesn't look like he can do much. But he'll run, he'll run you over. He'll scrum right over you. He'll even offload around you. Uh, that like he's he definitely the most underrated prop in America right now. Oh, you see, you see Angus in the field, man. When he plays, you know that. I do you see him run those hard lines and stuff like that when he carries, or it doesn't matter what size of guy that come through him or he carry through. Um, Angus is just the guy that he get the job done when he's needed. So, yeah, his physicality and he's super smart as well. So, yeah, that's that's one thing I, I know for sure. You know, we we need Angus. Yeah, Angus is a hard worker. He works uh, works a day job, works construction, and then comes in here and uh, puts in a big shift. Um, yeah, he's a he's a great prop, uh, good scrummager, good ball carrier, overall great player. Um, Angus brings a lot of stuff to the attack, mainly his ball carrying skills. Um, if he gets the ball, he's not letting it go. He'll always get a meter or two, no matter what happens. And then you kind of see the way he plays and stuff. You definitely de tell he's a quality player, you know. And even to this day, um, there's still like you know you can tell he always tried to better his game and stuff. And for me, just learning with you know from him, especially him and Orly. So Angus is very quiet in the locker room. He's not one of those, you know, uh, G everybody out type of guys. He's very much to himself. He knows what he needs to do and he gets it done. Yeah, I think Angus usually kind of sticks to himself, but then every now and again he'll chime in and he'll uh, he'll add into the add in a point or two here and there. Angus is pretty funny, man. Like I never met like a guy. He's so quiet, you know. But when he says something like a choke and stuff like that, like it's it's just it's. You know, you, you just get a good laugh with the guy. You know, very humble. Um, like I said, he's super quiet. But when it comes to, you know, game and stuff like that, he's he's on the he's on the go. So. Angus's character is very sarcastic, and that is a big part why me and him get along. Because he'll say something, and I know exactly that it's sarcastic, even though somebody else kind of maybe gets offended. I can I can be there like in I'm like. Dude, chill. He's, he's just kidding, you know, that type of, um, that type of character. 
that's why me and him get together, uh, get along so much. We're, we're always salt. We're always salty. We're salty together. You can check out more of those uh, player spotlights on uh, YouTube, Instagram by following the Utah Warriors. And I recognize that laugh at the very end. It may or may not have been me just running my mouth there with Chatty in the locker room as we were doing that. But, you know, when you've got guys like Chad, who obviously got his first cap against the All Blacks, when you've got Paul Mullins, who's been capped so many times with the Eagles, and here's Gus pushing them both still at this point in his career to continue to be better and to perform. It's incredible. And it's a testament to his work rate and to his work ethic and his ability. Yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, all MLR second team last year. So the league acknowledging how good he was. And it was interesting that, uh, you know, Paul Mullen comes in and it's like, Oh, Paul Mullen's the starter, right? No, Anka started for a long time and Paul would come off the bench and Paul's a starting prop for the USA um, which is, uh, you know, the depth at that particular position uh, at tight head prop is pretty notable for Utah. I would argue the uh, Utah Warriors have the best pair of, of tight head props in the league. We probably have a, a set of the best front rows in the league. I mean, when you look at that one, two, three position, and it starts with Gus McClellan on the opposite side with Franco. Uh, you know, there's so many guys that contribute in a pretty heavy way that you could really go 40 minutes and 40 minutes with those guys and not see a drop off in performance at all across the entire front row. Pretty awesome. OK, let's bring in uh, our first guest of the day, uh, Tomasi Tonga, hometown hero from Harriman. We'll hear from Lucky Foto here coming up as well, the uh, former Ute and Arizona Cardinal defensive lineman. Uh, but let's bring in Tomasi Tonga, uh, who got his first cap. Against Austin, scored a try. Tomasi, how we doing, yes, man? Sir. What's up, y'all? What's happening? What's going on? We're just we're just hanging out, talking who would play who in a movie. Uh, you know, <laughs> Angus McClellan. There's tons of content here. Let's start with this. Um, what was it like to have your first cap and score in the same game? That's pretty special. Oh yeah, for sure. It was cool. Like that's like the best way I can describe it. It was cool. Like it's like when you're little. It's kind of like when you first play, like you're when you're th- imagining when you grow up and you fill your dreams, you're like, I'm gonna score as soon as I get in, and I did it, so you know, it feels good. But on to the next now, you know, you were one of the leaders on this Utah Select side. Talk about playing with Coach Ali Khalifi as your coach and now having him as a teammate and being able to work with uh Robbie and Coach Pittman and uh Coach Davies in continuing to grow. You've had such a high ceiling for performance. I've watched you since you were in high school. So to see the local kid come all the way through it, and now here you are. I mean, I've, I, I screamed at you from the end line during a couple of games, and, you know, it's been always so that. fun to watch. You know, talk about now, you know, going from playing for fun to this is what you do and you're learning from some of the best in the world. Oh, it's nice. It's so nice. That's, like, it's, it's perfect. Every day I come in, and it's just, what can I learn today, you know? So it's like, Whoever it's coming from, either it's coming from my position group, like Calvin and Tyler, learning from them, um, Shawnee, Sean Davies, yeah, it's, it's perfect. I couldn't ask for a better place to be, that's, that's for sure. And then when Robbie got here, it was just even better. Like, it just stacked on some more goodness in my life. I was able to learn more from him. And then, it, especially with Ollie, which is, like, you brought that up. That, it was really funny because, like, he was my coach. And now he's my teammate. But he still has, like, those coach factors in him, even, like, when we're in practice and stuff. Um, but it's cool. No, he's a, he's a good character, so I love being around him anyway. So it's it's good. It's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And let's bring in another Harriman guy, a Harriman homie, Lecky Foto, the former Ute great Arizona Cardinal defensive lineman who now joins us on Dub Nation. Uh, Lecky, how's it going, yeah. man? What's up, guys? How you guys doing? I'm good. Thank you guys for having me here. We're good. We're good. You you guys go back a little ways, right? When did it start? Uh, I think sophomore year. So oh, yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. I believe it was our sophomore in high school. We yeah. connected. Uh, yeah, through through rugby, and actually, actually, my first time, you know, playing rugby too, my sophomore yeah. year. <laughs> oh, just meet, you know, meeting Masi, you know, uh, during that same time, you know, and just crazy how you know our our, our journey has led us, you know. Uh, down this mm-hmm. path and you know still connected it's the Herman homies which which I absolutely love and uh you're crushing it in the NFL and now Tomasi is a professional athlete himself 
like you what what's it like to see him get to this level and then he gets in against Austin and he scores a try in his first game. You know, first of all, you know, as a friend, you know, to see, you know, one of your close friends, you know, accomplish, you know, in, in chasing one of his dreams and goals, um, you know, it, it's definitely a, a, a special feeling inside, you know, just seeing it from the outside. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I couldn't be bored, more happy and proud, uh, you know, uh, of anyone, you know, getting their first cap, you know, and, and nobody else was going to do it, you know, but, but that guy right there, you know, and, you know, I, I, I know Masi, you know, is the type of player, you know, to, to do, you know, uh, you know, do whatever is needed, you know, to, to get a dub or, or, or whatever it is. But it's just special to see him, you know, get, get that opportunity and, you know, for him, for him to run with it. So, you know, rugby plays such a big part in a lot of Polynesian households and the culture of the game and the type of person that our game creates. What has that meant to you carrying that culture into the NFL now, and how does that affect the way you play and the way you interact with the rest of your teammates at the at the National Football League level? I'm sorry, I I think you cut cut out right there. Oh yeah, it, we were buffering there a little bit. <laughs> oh. Talk about the culture of rugby and how that affects you yeah, playing so in the NFL sorry. and what you've been able to bring from rugby to playing football now at the top level. Playing rugby um, has definitely helped me out uh, as a player. Uh, you know the the way that I transitioned from um, you know playing my sophomore year of rugby and then you know getting the the opportunity to to go to the NFL. But you know throughout that journey and, and that road, you know rugby has been a, a big um, a big part of my 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 sports life, especially you know kind of coming in um, you know going into year three. But, um, you know, there, there, there's still a lot of guys, still a lot of network connections that I have uh, in, in the rugby community that I'm still tied with. Look at this photo. These kids have no shot at tackling you. Can we go back to that? <laughs> like, they have no chance. Look at look at this they fullback. He's, he's, he's up way too high. <laughs> I believe I, I, I believe Masi on this play gave me that offload on that run. Nice. But, you know, oh, it, actually- it's just crazy. I actually think I remember that. I actually think I remember. And then you passed, made one more pass, and I think we scored off of that, if my memory. Lucky, why'd correct. you pass? What's that? <laughs> why'd you well, pass? There's like, right there's like there. 10 people trying to tackle him. <laughs> so he just, he just passed it to one guy, and we scored. Like, like World War Z suddenly on you? <laughs> yeah. <sighs> So, Lucky, let me ask you this. With some of the great athletes that you play with in Arizona, you know, the Kyler Murrays, the DeAndre Hopkins, the J.J. Watts, who do you think would be the most impressive rugby player if you were to take them out to your local club and get them to change codes? Mm, for, for me, um, I'm a big I'm a big Jonah Lomu fan, you know. Uh, I, 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 that's probably the main guy that I watched – you know, when, when I first started getting into it and, you know, also being Tongan, you know, having that cultural background, you know, having someone that's the same as me, you know, that's at the top, you know, uh, of a, you know, fast growing sport here in America too, you know, it, it, it's just something special, you know, and just the style of his play, you know, it, it's crazy. And, you know, so where would you see him play. fitting in on the NFL field if he was to cross codes? Where, what position do you think Jonah would have played? Uh, I mean, uh, on the rugby pitch, he was everywhere. But, you know, I, I, I think somewhere on the opposite side, of course. Uh, Greatest I, tight I, end I, ever if he picks up the yeah. ball and plays it from that point? Tight end, yeah. My hat, I, I I don't think I can argue with that. <laughs> that, would, that, would be, that would be incredible. Okay, Tomasi, we got we to gotta ask you, dude. Uh, what's the vibe of the team right now? Coming off a of bye week. Mm-hmm. Got to get a win against yeah. Dallas to kind of keep up in the West right now. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, um, we do need to win this week. But, I mean, it's just another week for us. Mm-hmm. We're just going in, training like usual, just keep getting our head down and grinding like every day. So, we're all feeling good. We all feel rested from that bye week. So, we're just ready to put on for Warrior Nation and have a good game on Saturday. It's going to be fun. And, uh, you know, one of the NIL, the name, image, likeness guys is going to be there, Jaron Hall. Got Chaz Ayu, Kingsley Suamata'ia, and then Lecky, your boy Britton Cubby, got an NIL. 
with uh, with the Utah Warriors, saw, which is awesome. Saw. Tell tell us something about Britain we don't know. I think everyone knows everything about Britain. You know, he he's been on this earth longer than some of us. You know, so you know, <laughs> it's it, it's more of asking him. You know, to to learn about ourselves because I'm pretty sure he knows everything. But you know, I I, I love Covey. You know, and I'm happy that you know that that you guys that, you know that that the organization you know reached out to a guy like that. You know, um, you guys are gonna love him. Uh, I'm sure everyone else you know everyone else already loves him. But you know, to have him part of the rugby community is gonna be big. Look, Lecky, you know you've always got a home here with Dub Nation, whether you're just visiting to see friends and family or, oh, you, uh, you know, whether you want to carry that ball like that, picking and going off the back of the scrum and throwing it around like it's a baked ham. You know, the things we love to see from our locals doing well on the national stage. And, uh, you know, it'd be great to have you back home and be able to host you, even as a guest for Dub Nation, brother. Thank you for being on with us, man. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. Thanks, Lecky. Lecky Foto, a uh, Ute legend, Arizona Cardinal defensive lineman. Uh, thanks to Tomasi Tonga as well. Who who knows, Banksy? He might be in the starting lineup this week. I, I He's at least coming off the bench for a bunch of minutes. He earned that in his first cap. But who knows? Maybe he'll start. We'll see what Utah does with the pairings. And then you have Paul Asike a little bit later. Now there's some depth at that position, which is exciting. You know, we've been good at that position, and we keep signing inside backs to that 12-13 spot. Obviously, having Utah Warrior number one with Paul Lasique coming back, I think is going to be massive as far as reinforcements to that center core, but also as a mentor for guys like Tomasi there who can learn so much, similar body types, similar playing styles. You know, so it'll be great to have that leadership here uh, with Paul coming back, especially for guys like Tomasi. I'm assuming both those guys played at Harriman. Is that what we're talking about, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And they win the national championship what, last summer. So it's been Highland Forever, United, Harriman. It's just awesome to see Tomasi embody exactly what we talk about when we say pathway. Yeah. Yes. He's a local kid. He went to Harriman. He's playing for the Warriors now. He's on the selects. Took a little bit of time. Here we are. And now he's going to – He's. I bet he starts at some point in the season. And he contributes to this team, which is awesome. You know, clearly he's going to be a factor. The kid's got way too much talent and potential. And he's one of the kind of kids you absolutely root for. You want to see him do well. And he's got such a great spirit and a great smile. So uh, I would look for a lot of good things out of Masi this year for sure. Absolutely. Okay, Utah and Dallas coming up. We told you on Saturday, we told you this show was loaded, by the way. We said that. We had we had Jaron Hall, Lecky Fotu, and Tomasi Tonga on here. And talked about Angus. I teased uh, Niall Saunders mic'd up. We'll get to that next week. We ran out of time, but oh my goodness. What, what a show. And by the way, don't forget about Junior Warriors. Come hang out Saturday. You know, support our own Ashley Burge as she directs yeah. the Junior Warriors program. Shouts out to Ashley. We see you doing good things in the community, girl. I absolutely love it. Uh, Junior Warriors, if you want to get your kids involved and exposed to the game of rugby, it's touch, so it's non-contact. They can learn the basics of running and passing the ball. This is a great way to do it. There's an entire program coming up this spring. The deadline to sign up for that is March 11th, or there's clinics before the games that you can get your kids involved with as well. Just go to junior.warriorsrugby.com. That's jr.warriorsrugby.com. Dot com and get your kids sign up and stay connected with the state of Utah through rugby and the Junior Warriors program. You get tickets to the games too. You get some swag, some ex an experience. That's awesome. Ultimately, we all want to pay money for experiences. This will be one for you, kid, which is great. Okay, that'll do it for us. Fun show, man. I'm excited. We're back to a game week. Let's go. A Saturday, noon mountain time at Zions Bank Stadium, Utah and Dallas, the home opener. Let's go. If you can't be there, watch it on KMYU, stream it on kslsports.com and the Rugby Network, listen on ESPN 700 960. Banksy and Burge, Ashley, that is, have the call. And, oh, by the way, your ticket gets you into BYU versus Utah at three as well. Oh, BYU almost beat Cal, by the way, last week. Both those teams playing incredibly well through the early part of this season, so that should be a great matchup to follow, hopefully, a big Warriors win to turn the season around. Let's go, Dub Nation. And go meet Jaron Hall. Let's go. Okay, that'll do it for us. Like and share this episode of Dub Nation and follow the Utah Warriors on social media. For Jaron Hall, Lecky Fotu, Tomasi Tonga, Mason Benson, Billy the producer, and Banksy.
this this way, this this way. There we go. <laughs> I am Jerem Jordan, and I'm not a weatherman. Go Warriors. <laughs>